It's very hard for me to maintain a schedule, I have to say. And one month has gone by, and I'm feeling very proud <coughs> that actually <laughs> that I've given the two classes each day for the whole month. So, Niyam Seva is actually coming to an end today, you know, completing the Niyam. So I'm um, a little bit proud, but I'm yeah. a little bit drained also. <laughs> and we are also very proud that we are very... Well, I, 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 with one or two exceptions, everybody's been here every day. Only Jayananda is the champion yeah. for attendance. He gets, wow. the, he gets the attendance he's star. A, he's, a, he's, <laughs> like a, he's like a Parikshit. Yeah. He's like Parikshit, isn't he? That's right. Well, they always when they do the Ashta, when they do uh, Bhagavad Saptaha, if you ever go to Bhagavad Saptaha, you'll notice that there's one special asana, there's a principal, principal listener. And, that, he, he, and there has to be one listener. principal, and that principal listener has to come every day for the whole time. So that principal listener is usually the person who pays. For the yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm what did I pay him? <laughs> <laughs> That's about my position. I have to pay people to come and listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, for, um, we're doing the, the end of here of the... We, we have a problem, I can just explain to Vichitri because she's here for the first time. That we're, we're doing Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, but the Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi is a bit of a complicated book in its tradition because it has... It, it, it's a, it, it, uh, two different sampradayas, two different sects, they claim ownership of this book. So we have the Radha Balava sampradaya and we have the Gaudiya sampradaya. Uh, both of them consider Prabodhananda to be their own man. Yeah. So the Harivangshis think that the, that uh, Hita Harivangsha, that uh, Prabodhananda is Hita Harivangsha's disciple. And uh, the Gaudiyas consider Prabodhananda to be, uh, of course, uh, a disciple or, you know, a disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, uh, we've been reading, there are no commentaries written in the Gaudiya Sampradaya until 20th century. And that written in Bengali by uh, Anantadas Pandit of Radhakund. <coughs> and Anantadas Pandit was, you know, giving daily classes and uh, I was just thinking today because Anantadas Pandit would give three classes every single day <laughs> during Radha, for the whole Niyam Seva. I'm thinking how, how, how burnt out I am after two classes a day. <laughs> and he is far more competent than I ever was. Anyway, but uh, he was giving classes in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, so that was published. Uh, and uh, he, he, you know, he, he uh, edited it and they made uh, the uh, Bengali edition of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. But this commentary is from the 18th century. This is in the, in the uh, Radha Vallava Sampradaya. Uh, and he, Hari Lal Vyas, who wrote this commentary, he uh, says that this is not the first commentary, but it's, you know, several commentaries were written before, but none of them were completed. So I don't know, I haven't seen any of those other ones in publication. But this one is a very, uh, a very considerable sized volume. And it's, uh, and it, it, it's uh, not just a, it really is the Siddhanta of the, of the Radha Vallava So, when we read it, well, I'm doing this because I'm, in, I'm, I'm curious, studying with curiosity the uh, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi because of this pre precise difference and studying the, the interpretations that are coming in the two different traditions. And um, also because I have a, a very deep interest in Prabodhananda Saraswati and all his writings. I have some, some ideas about Prabodhananda Saraswati that uh, of his influence on the Sampradaya, as he was, uh, you know, Gopal Bhatta's guru, everybody knows. And then uh, Gopal Bhatta... He was Gopal Bhatta guru? Yeah. Gopal Bhatta Goswami, no? Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Okay. Gopal, in the beginning of Hari Bhakti Vilas, Gopal Bhatta Goswami states that Prabodhananda is his, his guru. His uncle? His uh, uncle? And uncle. Well, he doesn't say that he's his <coughs> uncle, but, the, the, you know, that's one of the conflicting traditions. In the, anyway, the, 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 because the histories in the Gaudiya Sampradaya and the history in the uh, Radha Balavi Sampradaya are different. They, can tell, they tell two different stories of Prabodhananda. 
So you would almost think it was two different people. But the only trouble is it can't possibly be two different people. Because the books that are written by the, the, these two Prabodhanandas are the same books. So what we're doing, what we're left with, is we're left with a mystery that we have different witnesses and now we have to try to understand what these different witnesses, uh, you know, who is telling the truth and who is, uh, and who is not and what, which parts of their stories match and which part of their stories don't match and so on. So it's, a, it's an interesting, it's a, it, for me it's a bit of an interesting detective problem, yeah? Yeah, there is also another aspect of the detective problem because as far as I know, some tell that um, Gopal Bhatta Goswami was the guru of also. Yes, well, I could, the, the, yes, so I, I mean, I, 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 I don't really want to go through it again because I've told no, this story, no, I think, please, twice please, already. Please. You want me to tell the story? <laughs> 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 All right, <laughs> okay, I'm getting good at telling this story, so I'll, 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 I'll try to do it a little bit better than I did the, day, the other day. At any rate, when, the other day I did it for two people, <laughs> so now I do for everybody. All right, so let me try to gather this together. In, in the Prabodhananda, wrote the Chaitanya Chandramrita. This is the first evidence that we have. And in the, in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, so taking Prabodhananda from the Gaudiya Sampradaya, the first evidence we have of Prabodhananda is that his name appears in the lists of Mahaprabhu's devotees. Like for instance, Devaki Nandan wrote the, a book called uh, Vaishnava Vandana. So in Devaki, Nandan, Vaishnava, Devaki Nandan's Vaishnava Vandana, he mentions, Chaitanya, he mentions Prabodhananda, and the main, uh, the main, uh, you know, in each one of these, it's just one line or two lines of, of Bengali verse. And it, when it says about Prabodhananda, the main thing that he, they say about him is that he's Gora Gunagana Saraswati. That he's the, that his, he is the, his, his words, his Saraswati, Saraswati can mean his speech or his words, that he, or, he, or that he is the, he is the, he is the Saraswati, or he is the, the goddess of learning for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's qualities, for, for doing kirtan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's qualities. And in the, there, there are three or four other of these Vaishnava Vandanas, there's one also that's attributed to Jiva Goswami in, in Sanskrit, and it says pretty much the same thing. It's in all the times, whenever it mentions Prabodhananda, it mentions that he wrote a book, or that he, he was famous for glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that indicates, obviously, the Chaitanya Chandramrita, that, he, that he, he was the author of Chaitanya Chandramrita. But subsequent to that, for instance, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you would expect, because Chaitanya Charitamrita also has lists of devotees. And it, you know, it mentions the, different, the tree of Chaitanya tree, and the different branches of the Chaitanya tree, and who's on which branch, and so on. But Prabodhananda's name is not mentioned in there. Now, He's written a very important book, really the, you know, we, we talk about Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's Chaitanya Shatakam. But Chaitanya Shatakam, uh, we have no copies of Chaitanya Shatakam. We have two verses from Chaitanya Shatakam that uh, are found in uh, Kavi Karnapur's Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya. It's found again in, in uh, you know, Chaitanya Charitamrita is found again in, the, in, you know, in, in these different uh, biographies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But we don't have the whole full 100 verses of Sarvabhoma. There's one book, I think some, sometimes people do publish something that they claim is that, but it's, it doesn't have those two verses. So we, we doubt that that's actually Sarvabhoma's book. So, the main Sanskrit work glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that was written during his lifetime was the Chaitanya Chandramrita. So it's a very important testimony, it's a very important piece of evidence, and a very important piece of historical datum uh, uh, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very significant work for, for the Sampradaya. But the other, but then in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we don't have any, any mention of, Chait of Prabodhananda. And Prabodhananda's other works, so whether we take Chaitanya Charita, whether we take Radharasa Sudhanidhi as his or not, certainly there are other works. So Prabodhananda Saraswati wrote Vrindavana Mahimamrita, that's his next most famous book. He wrote a commentary to the Gopal Tapani Upanishad. He wrote Shruti Stuti Vyakya, a commentary to the 87th chapter of the 10th canto. He wrote, uh, <coughs> he, he wrote uh, the, the Sangeet Madhava, which is a, a book written in the imitation of Gita Govinda. Uh, a bit, uh, you know, the, a different story, but uh, the same, Giti Kavya, that has the, the, 
uh, songs written in the, the style of the of uh, Gita Govinda, and pretty much, you know, in, in terms of format, it it follows the same kind of format as Gita Govinda. Uh, then he wrote uh, Ascharya Rasa Pravanta, and most of these books were only discovered in the late 19th and 20th centuries. They had, you know, like Ascharya Rasa Prabandha, Haridas Das discovered this and published it. Shruti Stuti Vyakya, this was discovered by uh, Kusum Sarovar Wala Krishna Das and he published it. And uh, in this way, these books written by Prabodhananda were discovered uh, and uh, republished only in the, in the 20th century. But they had no currency, practically speaking, they had no currency in the Gaudiya Sampradaya whatsoever. So, <coughs> they... Uh, in, there's one book, another book, that one of the books that, was, uh, that also came to light, because what happened in the 20, 19th and 20th century was that there was a great uh, move once the printing press came to India. Then uh, there was a, a movement which started, and you know, most of the leading uh, Vaishnavas of the 19th century and, and 20th century were involved in one way or another in getting the books published. They suddenly realized that this, uh, there was a vast uh, library of Gaudiya Vaishnava literature that was, uh, that was available that most people hadn't seen. Most people uh, in Bengal, for instance, their uh, knowledge of, the, of uh, Vaishnavism came through Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavat, and Prem Bhakti Chandrika, and Prarthana. These were the main books that were, that were known, Bengali books that were, that were uh, popular and common. And some few people, some few pundits would know the, the Sandarbhas or the Bhagavad commentaries, but, um, but the, a lot of the books, a lot of the texts that were written even by Mahaprabhu's associates, by like Narahari and so on, these, these were for all intents and purposes lost. They're not, they were not widely spread or widely known. So these, this is what happened in the 19th and 20th centuries. You had to, uh, this movement to start discovering and to look for these books. And Haridas Das Babaji was probably the most prominent of these. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur participated, and uh, you know, the, and uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was also participating in this. Everybody, basically anybody who was anybody in the Vaishnava world, uh, was curious and interested to find lost works. And to, and to bring them to the light of day and to publish them, to translate them into Bengali from Sanskrit and so on. And this came, has been going on and still new works are being discovered, like for instance, uh, Sadhana, Deepika and things even in the last uh, 45, 50 years, new, new manuscripts have been discovered and, uh, and published. And I think that there probably still are, are more. But <coughs> in particular, we're interested in Prabodhananda. So these new works were, they, they had, the point I'm making is that Anything other than Chaitanya Chandramrita, which had fairly wide circulation, his other books were not well known in the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Now, on the other hand, at least two, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and Vrindavan Mahimamrita, were very, very popular in the Hari, Hari Bhangshi Sampradaya, the Radha Balava Sampradaya. Now, the, the, what's interesting here, again, about the Prabodhananda is that in, in the Vrindavana Mahimamrita, there are five or six verses that are glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So once again, we know that, that, the, the, in, that this book, which has verses glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, written by Prabodhananda Saraswati, was current in the Hari Vangsha Sampradaya, in the Radha Vallabhi Sampradaya. But for some reason, the Radha Vallabhis don't, don't acknowledge, they never mention... They never mention that connection to Chaitanya in Prabodhana. So what it looks like, it looks like the two Sampradaya, they, but they have, a, a, they have their story of Prabodhananda. So their story of Prabodhananda is that Prabodhananda came to Vrindavan after Harivangsha had come here, which would have been 1534, 15, just, just around 1533, I think is the, the year that uh, Harivangsha came to Vrindavan. And just after he came, Prabodhananda came, and Prabodhananda was a sannyasi from Benares. This is the story they tell him that he was a Mayavadi sannyasi from Banaras, and he came to Vrindavan, and when he met uh, uh, Hari Vansh, he became uh, an, a Rasik Vaishnava, and a, a, a worshipper of, of Radha, and he became a disciple or a follower of, 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 uh, of Hari, Hari Vansh. So, <clears throat> you know, so the main point there is that he, they, cons and they considered him to be a sannyasi from Banaras. 
Now, the, one of the big problems we have in the Gaudiya Sampradaya is this idea that Prakashananda Saraswati. So we have, we have, uh, we have two <coughs> things here. Prabodhananda, who has written a poem about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's, he's, he's not mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita anywhere. But Prakashananda Saraswati is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But there are certain lacuna in the story of Prakashananda Saraswati. This Prakashananda Saraswati is written about twice in Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the first, in the Adi Lila in the seventh chapter, in the Madhya Lila in the, in the, in the, in the uh, 25th chapter, you have ex extensive description of Prakashananda Saraswati's conversion. Twice, so it was a significant enough story. And in the Chaitanya Bhagavat also, uh, twice, Prakashananda Saraswati's name is mentioned. And if you know the Chaitanya Bhagavat, you know that it's an incomplete work. The Chaitanya Bhagavat was never finished. You know, the the uh, Antyalila, the Antyakanda, is only seven chapters long. And so in, that, in, the, in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, twice, the, uh, the uh, Mahaprabhu has a kind of a, um, an avesh. He becomes, uh, he, he starts to say, there's a, you know, um, there's a sannyasi in, in, in Vinaras who's cutting me to bits. Mm, he's cutting my body. Well, kanda Kanda, he's, 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 he's cutting my body to bits. And, uh, you know, I'm going, and he's, you know, got, got, had an, uh, became angry and he says, I'm going to get that precaution on this sort of thing. So, <clears throat> obviously, in the composition of the work, you know, uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur was planning or intending to write the story of Prakashananda somewhere along the line when the time, when the proper appropriate moment came. But that appropriate moment never arrived because he was, you know, because, uh, you know, because Vrindavan Das never got past a certain point in Jagannath Puri Lila. So, <clears throat> so Prakashananda is mentioned in both Chaitanya Bhagavata and Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he's important enough that he had. His, his story is told twice, and it's not just say, why was it so important, because this was a major, he was a major figure. According to Chaitanya Charitamrita, he had 60,000 sannyasi disciples, and that they were all coming to listen to him, uh, listen to Vedanta from him. And of course, when Mahaprabhu didn't go to listen to Vedanta, then he, uh, uh, you know, he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why don't you, uh, why don't you listen to Vedanta? And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know, in the in the what we have, he told him about prem prayojan. He told him the pancham purushartha prem mahadhan. He told him that the pur purpose of life is prem, and, uh, and not mukti. It's a pancham purushartha. So he convinced uh, Prakashananda. But now you would expect, you would expect that when a person of this stature converts, you know, then uh, you don't just want to have the conversion story. You want him to do something afterwards also. Uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he converted and then he stayed there in Jagannath Puri. We know that he was still continuing on and participating in Mahaprabhu's Leela in Jagannath Puri. Jagai Madhai, you know, they converted also and they, we know that they, they went on and lived uh, devotional lives in Navadvip. Of course, we don't have, they didn't make any significant contributions, so there's, not, there's no uh, great information about them further on. But generally speaking, right, if, you, if a person converts, you don't want to just have uh, the conversion for publicity uh, purposes alone. Uh, because people will obviously inquire, well, what did he do after that? Did he, you know, the, the, the English word is recidivism. Hmm? So recidivism is a common thing that happens. If people convert, you have a, a, a big major conversion, you know, uh, you know, I can think of examples, but let, let's leave them out. But, you know, if, you, if you're going to make a publicity that this great man is my disciple, then hopefully he behaves like a disciple and doesn't go drinking and womanizing afterwards. Yeah? <clears throat> so maybe that's what Prabhupada, this is what, maybe what Prakashananda did was he converted to, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and became a womanizer. Nobody wants to talk him about him anymore. Point. The point is that after Prakash, that we have... Prakashananda and Prabodhananda, we don't know what happens to them. Where did they go? And we ha if we have any answer, the only answer that we can say is that perhaps the answer is here, that he went to Hithari Vaksh. Now how could that be? Well, the story is there. The story is there. In, 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 we have a, first of all, it, it, not, there's a commentary, one of these books that was discovered, there's a commentary to Chaitanya Chandramrita, which is of little value, honestly speaking, uh, but it's called the Anandit Anandi Tika. 
And the, the commentator's name is Anandi. And this book was, is dated, I think it's about 1703 or something, the, 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 the dating of this book. And in that, he says directly that Prabodhananda is Prakashananda. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time we have that connection that Prabodhananda is Prakashananda. But that Pra Prakashananda Prabodhananda uh, connection is further supplemented by Lala Babu. The Lala Babu, who is uh, Krishna Das. The Krishna Das who, 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 who built the temple right next door to Rangaji. You know, the big temple, the nice temple next to Rangaji, which was built in the, in the mid-1800s. 18, so that temple, uh, Lala Babu's temple, Lala Babu was a rich man from Bengal. He was a, from a very notable family. His father, uh, just as an interesting historical side note, he was, his, his father was the builder of the, of the temple of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at uh, Vishnupriya's birthplace, uh, not Vishnupriya's birthplace, but at, at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's birthplace. And that, with that temple went into the water in, in the mid-1800s also, uh, in a Gang Ganga flood, and left uh, Navadweep without a birthplace of Chaitanya. But, <clears throat> but this, uh, this uh, uh, Lala Babu, he became a Babaji, he became a, 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 a renouncer, and when he became a Babaji, then he wrote a book in Bengali called the Bengali Bhaktamal. Hmm? So Bhaktamal, again, Bhaktamal, if you, the, the Bhaktamal is a very famous book in, Beng, in, 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 in Rindavan. We have just now, if you want, if you can leave this class right now, you can go listen to Bhaktamal at Vinit Narayan's place. He's Rajendra Das Ji is there. So Rajendra Das, so in, in Vrindavan and every, elsewhere in North India, but especially for some reason in Vrindavan, it's uh, Nabaji who wrote the Bhaktamal is uh, was a Ramanandi. But the commentary, Priya Das, was a disciple of the, in, from the Ra Radha Raman uh, house. So it was a book that this, this Bhaktamal is a book that is shared by, the whole by all the Sampradayas of Vrindavan. Everybody in Vrindavan, it, 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 there, there's a kind of a spirit there uh, that uh, we can glorify all the, all the saints of Vrindavan. It doesn't just contain saints of Vrindavan, but it contains others also. But there are still uh, people in Vrindavan, and elsewhere I suppose, but mostly in Vrindavan, who, are, who get the title Bhaktamali. So Bhaktamali is like Rajendra Das is a Bhaktamali. And, you know, the Maluk Pit here in just by Vangshi Bhatt. That's where he, he stays. That he's that uh, they have the, the the culture or the the um, tradition of preserving Bhaktamal. So the Bengali Bhaktamal is more or less the same, but but Bengali Bhaktamal he adds a bit more color. He's he's kind of taken the information that's in the Hindi one in the Brajabhasha Bhaktamal, and he's expanded on it and sometimes made an increasing story. So there he gives the story about Gopal Bhatta. So the story that he tells is that he now he's, he tells he, he also says that Prabodhananda and Prakashananda are the same. So this is, so the tradition was there because uh, Lala Babu also he's he's just repeating an oral tradition that that uh, Prakashananda and Prabodhananda are the same person. <coughs> so <clears throat> and there he says tells the story of Hitahari Bhanks, which I'll just add to that. Hitahari Bhanks. He's a Hari Vaksh, was the disciple of Gopal Bhakta. And there is circumstantial evidence that supports that. Hmm? Because the circumstantial evidence that supports that is that the Vangsha that currently reigns in Radharaman ha house, in Radharaman, the Radharaman Sampradha, the Radharaman uh, Vangsha, that is descended from Damodar. Damodar Goswami, and Damodar Goswami is the disciple of, uh, of uh, Gopal Bhatta. And this Damodar and his brother Gopinath, they come from Saharanpur, which is in uh, Uttar Pradesh, up near the Uttarkhand. If you're, going on the way to, if you're going on the way to Haridwar, the main road used to go uh, in that general direction. So you would go if you were going. So Gopal Bhatta, when he was going to Haridwar, this is the tradition that's in the Radha Raman house. That when he was on his way to to Haridwar to go to the uh, on a on a journey a pilgrimage in the Charidham and, and to bathe in the Ganges and so on, that he passed through Saharanpur and there he made 
uh, these two brothers, his disciples. Actually, he made the older brother a disciple first, and then that older brother remained a sannyasi. And the younger brother, uh, he was a householder, so they brought him to Vrindavan to uh, worship uh, uh, Radharaman. And from uh, Deoband, so Deoband is right near. Deoband and Saranpur are, you know, uh, uh, I think, how much? 20 kilometers, maybe something like that, maybe not more. Deoband and Saranpur, they're in, you know, next two stations, one, one station apart. So, <coughs> In the day, the, uh, the, these other, the, the other brothers that they came, the, the, this, uh, he also came and became uh, attracted to uh, Gopal Bhatta and came, became attracted to the Vrindavan mood again. And then after that, he returned to Vrindavan. He came to Vrindavan. That was 1533. So the timing is, is, sounds right because Gopal Bhatta would have gone. But this is circumstantial evidence. I don't have any hard, you know, literary evidence for that. I'm just saying. So the, the, there's the, there's the, the oral tradition is there that Hit Harivansh was the disciple of Gopal Bhatta. So now the story that Lala Babu tells, Lala, I'm calling him Lala Babu, I should really call him Krishna Das. You know, he's one of the Siddha Krishna Dasas, they consider him a Siddha Krishna Das. There are three Siddha Krishna Dasas, so he's one of them. So Lala, uh, Siddha Krishna Das, this is not the same Siddha Krishna Das as Govardhan, but this is another Siddha Krishna. So <coughs> Krishna Das, he writes that Gopal Bhatta was uh, the, the, the guru of Harivangsha, and that one day Harivangsha was eating pan on Ekadasi. Hmm? That he was taking tambul, he was, he was eating on Ekadasi. So now we know, what do we know about Gopal Bhatta? We know that Gopal Bhatta was very, you know, that he, he did the Hari Bhakti Vilas, that's his main work in, in, in his name. And even books that are ascribed to him are all about vidi, like the, the Satriya Sardipika and so on which were written either by him or by somebody else, we don't know, but the, you know, they're, written by, they're, they're authored by someone called Gopal Bhatta, according to, uh, according to the, uh, you know, the information that we get. So, he was into the rules, he was into the rule. I mean, you, this Hari Bhakti Vilas, you, there's nobody in the Gaudiya Sampradaya who follows Hari Bhakti Vilas, not from beginning to end. You know, the Hari Bhakti Vilas, the Hari Bhakti Vilas, you know, people pick and choose whatever is important to them, but anybody who's into Raganuga Bhakti and who's actually following the uh, Raganuga Bhakti, there's very little in the Hari Bhakti Vilas that they, that they can even pick up on, except for Dhamadarashtakam. You know, the Dhamadarashtakam is there, but, uh, but uh, other than that, Radha's name is only mentioned two or three times in the entire Hari Bhakti Vilas, and even then she's kind of mentioned in, a pass in passing, not in a significant way. So, if we just take, the, you know, I mean, these are this when we have when we have a bit of evidence like this, you see, we don't know that much really. Gopal Bhatta is lost in hagiography. Uh, do we to, do we to really know what these personalities were like? But we can understand something that Gopal Bhatta Goswami was very learned philosophically. He knew the Bhagavatam very well because he's the main source of information for uh, the the Sandarbhas by Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami wrote the six Sandarvas, he gives credit to Gopal Bhatta in every volume and says that this is because I'm, I'm just simply taking what Gopal Bhatta wrote and I'm just I'm revi revising it and expanding it, but, uh, but Gopal Bhatta is the source, right? So that's one, the source, one, one thing is that, is that that particular source of influence and the other thing is Hari Bhakti Vilas with, the, with this, uh, this attempt to bring Smriti and to bring uh, Tantric kinds of elements Pancharatric elements into the Gaudiya Sampradaya. The Gaudiya Sampradaya is not really a Pancharatric Sampradaya. We're not a Pancharatric Sampradaya. Mahaprabhu started by chanting the holy names, and and uh, and Mahaprabhu uh, didn't start. You know, it wasn't a, a temple-based uh, worship in the beginning. It was based purely on Hari Nam and Hari Katha, and uh, you know, and uh, Kirtan, Kirtan, Sravanam, Kirtanam. That was it. But <coughs> in the Vrindavan. Uh, in Vrindavan, uh, the temple worship was uh, set into motion, in, and uh, Gopal Bhatta wrote the Hari Bhakti Vilas for that purpose. So when ha Gopal Bhatta saw Hari Vangsha not obeying a I mean, there's several there's a 
in the Hari Bhakti Vilas, there's quite a substantial section on ekadasi about which, what, when, 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 the, when, which, uh, each ekadasi about when the ekadasi starts, when it stops, when you're supposed to do paran, and, and so on. I mean, it's, there's a, an exhaustive uh, explanation of, of ekadasi there, and what you're supposed to, how you're supposed to follow the rules for ekadasi, how you're supposed to, you know, ekadasi is. A, you should read Hari Bhakti Vilas. Ekadasi is lots of fun, really nice. Of you know, you're supposed to fast on, on dashami, only take something. Take a, you know a, a one meal at night, and then uh, you're in, on, on ekadasi you're supposed to stay uh, completely fasting near jala. Then all night you're supposed to stay awake doing hari kirtan, and then the next morning you only you're not allowed to sleep and on dwarasi, and you're not allowed to eat on dwarasi except one time in the morning. So ekadasi vrata is really three day vrata. And so when you do the sankalpa for ekadasi, you're supposed to say at the beginning of the of the things I'm doing a three day vrata. But now we do a courtesy by having, you know, a, a, a better, better food than on the other days. <laughs> we, have a, we have a different approach to a courtesy. Anyway, so you, the, the, when he's written that, the, all these rules for a courtesy, and there's Hithari Bhansha sort of chewing away on his pawn, and, uh, and uh, you know, Gopal Bhatta runs into him on the, in the gullies of uh, Vrindavan, and uh, you maybe. You know, who knows, maybe Hari da, uh, his Hari Bhansha uh, spit a good wad of, uh, you know, the, the red stuff on the ground next to him. <laughs> uh, that's not exactly <laughs> but Anyway, Gopal Bhatta was not pleased, let's say. And so they had an argument. And the argument, you know, and what Hari Bhansha said, he said that Radharani herself gave me her prasad. Radharani herself gave me this pan. How can I refuse Radharani? If she gives me her prasad, how am I going to refuse? So Gopal Bhatta says, you follow the rules. <laughs> and Hari Bhansa says, Radharani gave me. I'm not going to follow the rules. Uh, you know, this is, this is uh, in Krishna Das's account. So, there was... Now, of all the Sampradayas in Vrindavan, which Sampradaya follows Ikarasi most strictly? Which, which, it, you know, if I, at Radharaman Temple, uh, I was recently at Radharaman Temple and I was talking, and it was a, a codice, and I kind of said that I'm a little bit, you know, not necessarily always following a codice very strictly. So he got on my case, you know, uh, Sri Vatsa Goswami, he said, you know, that this is very important, the Gaudiyas, they follow the a codice. So a codice is, uh, of all the Sampradayas in Vrindavan, uh, Gaudiyas take the codice more seriously. Certainly, you know, than, than the Hari Bhanshis or the Hari Dasis and so on. So, they had an argument. And it ended with Gopal Bhatta rejecting Hari Vamsha and saying, you're not my disciple anymore. And <coughs> according to that story, uh, Hit Hari Vamsha then, uh, you know, fell into disrepute or whatever, you know, because of course... Uh, the story is coming through the Gaudiya Sampradaya, so we're taking Gopal Bhatta's side. And it says that uh, sometime later, not much later, because it's actually true that uh, Hari Bhansha died at an early age. We don't know, there's no evidence of how he died, just like with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we don't really know how he died. But with Hit Hari Bhansha, how he died, we don't know. But according to Lala Babu, according to, his head got chopped off by dacoits. He was he was cruelly murdered by some by by uh, you know by somebody for whatever reason either by Dakot thieves or by someone who didn't like him or whatever the case he was br brutally murdered and his head was chopped off and thrown into the Jamuna his head was thrown into the Jamuna and according to the to Krishna Das's story that uh, Gopal Bhatta just happened to be bathing in the Jamuna at the time and Hari Vansha's head went floating by. And that when that when Hari Bhansha's head went floating by, Hari Bhansha said, "I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> and Gopal Bhatta says, "You're forgiven." <laughs> but the other Balat Sampradaya, they don't accept this. Are you kidding? <laughs> they say he's not disciple of Gopal Bhatta. Exactly. So, so now that so uh, of course, of course, the Radha Balavi Sampradaya doesn't accept this story. What do you think? <laughs> so, but uh, of course, uh, because he died, uh, uh, most probably did die an unnatural death because he he, he died uh, he he died 
uh, in his 40s. He died fairly young, so he was, I think, in, in I don't know, 1553 or something, he, he died. So he was only, he was only uh, around 45, 50 years old. I can't, I, I'm, I'm just, my dates are a bit uh, rough. I, I've heard that only in the, of, among the Gaudis at that time, Prabodha and Saraswati continued to have relations with him. Everyone else boycotted him. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we're saying. So, Prabodhananda Saraswati, and now we know. We know that, 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 that already we know that in the hagiographies and in the histories of the Radha Vallabha Sampradaya, Prabodhananda is not just a minor character, but he's a significant character. He comes, he's a, he's a Mayavadi sannyasi from Banaras, and he comes, and he's, he, he takes shelter of uh, Hithari Vansh, and uh, remains with him, and uh, he's famous for writing this beautiful poem called Vrindavan Mahimamrita, and <coughs> so on. So now, the Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi, first, well, the first problem is, is, is Prakashananda and Prabodhananda, are the two the same? Well, we have, you know, internal evidence, we, on, we don't have external evidence, we only have the internal evidence, but internal evidence there in Chaitanya Chandramrita, even in Chaitanya Chandramrita we have some you know, indications that he was a, a sannyasi from Banaras, that he was a, first of all, Saraswati indicates right away that he was a sannyasi from Banaras. Now, one tradition I didn't mention here is that there's another tradition in the Gaudiya Sampradaya that talks about Prabodhananda, and these are from the texts, later historical texts, and the two main ones, there's one's called Anurag Valli, and the other one's called Bhakti Ratnakar. Now, Bhakti Ratnakar is very well received and accepted and honored in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, even though it's very late, right? The Bhakti Ratnakar is a late 18th century work. So that means it's not, it's not particularly, it's just like this Lala Babu and, and, uh, and this evidence that comes 200 years after the fact is, is, is not particularly reliable. But he's, but he's still, he's got, he, he tells that Prabodhananda was, now this is the first time, this is where we learn that Prabodhananda was the uncle. Uh, from Bhakti Ratnakara and from Anurag Valli. Anurag Valli is a bit earlier, it's in eight, early 18th century. So in Anurag Valli it says that Prabodhananda was, was uh, uh, Gopal Bhatta's uncle, that there were three brothers, uh, that uh, there was Venka, the Trimalla, and, and Prabodha. These three brothers were the, uh, the, un the father and uncles of Gopal Bhatta. And when Mahaprabhu came to South India, then all three, the whole family converted to, to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's co co idea uh, of devotion and Gopal Bhatta. And in Anurag Valley it says that Prabodhananda also came to Jagannath Puri. So maybe the, to, to, this accounts for the fact that, that, uh, that there was um, uh, that, Prabho that, there were, uh, that there's some evidence in the Chaitanya Chandramrita that, that Prabodhananda Saraswati had been in Jagannath Puri. There, there are verses in there which uh, quite clearly show that Prabodhananda knew Mahaprabhu's associates, that he, was, that he, was, uh, that he had uh, you know, good knowledge of them, that he had seen the, the, the scheme of things there in, in uh, Jagannath Puri and so on. So, uh, and, but in, in Bhakti Ratnaka, Prabodhananda doesn't even go to Jagannath Puri. Anurag Valli, Prabodhananda doesn't come to Vrindavan. But how could that be? You know, if you think that, that Prabodhananda Saraswati didn't come to Vrindavan, where did Vrindavan Mahimamrita come from? He could, the Vrindavan Mahimamrita could not have been written by someone who wasn't in Vrindavan. You know? Vrindavan Mahimamrita, the, the, the Nishta for Vrindavan. I mean, imagine that he wrote in 17 Shatakas, there's been more than 1,700 verses, in every single verse, I think, not, maybe not every single verse, but nearly every single verse, Vrindavan's name is found. He, say, he mentions Vrindavan by name. Jayati Jayati Radha Prema Sarai Ragadha. This is from, from, uh, this is from Vrindavan Mahimamrita. So, <clears throat> to say that, say that Prabodhananda never came to Vrindavan, this is stretching it. It almost renders the entire, the entire account incredible. How can you have the author of Vrindavan Mahimamrita and, and try to deny that he came to Vrindavan? So, in the Gaudiya Math, uh, the, in the Gaudiya Math, the Bhakti Ratnakar is accepted as the final uh, uh, proof. And so the, uh, the story of Prabodhananda as it is found in, the, in, the, uh, in Bhakti Ratnakar is considered to be authoritative. But this other information is not taken into account. So, <coughs> the, uh, so 
Prabodhananda, all the information that I give so far is leaving still many questions unanswered. But one thing is, is fairly clear, when we read Radharasa Sudhanidhi, when we read Vrindavana Mahimamrita, we see that Prabodhananda, well first of all the Radharasa Sudhanidhi, the Radharasa Sudhanidhi is taken as being the, the, the source, the pr principal source of Radhabhalava doctrine. It's there, they don't, Bhagavatam and the rest of it, they consider this all to be external. They say that you, you know, you have, they have a, a, a substructure and you have a superstructure. Right? So the substructure of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, the substructure of all the Vaishnava philosophies is the historical uh, evolution of the, of the doctrine that starts, you know, with the, with the Mahabharata and, you know, Narayan worship, Pancharatra, then the Vishnu Purana, Bhagavata Purana. There's a whole development of, of Gaudiya, of Vaishnava doctrine. But, you know, the, the Radha, it, Radha is not a significant part of that development until the Gita Govinda, right? Gita Govinda, Radha exists in, in folk traditions, but not in scriptural traditions. Radha, the evidence of Radha existing before Gita Govinda, and, I, and even Gita Govinda is not a scriptural tradition. Gita Govinda is a, is a, is a, a, a literary tradition. And even the Gita Govinda, because of the language in it, it's generally thought that it's that it's being that the that the that the, the Gita Govinda arises out of folk traditions. If you read, you know, like for instance, the the the, the meters, um, the, 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 the the language of the of the Gita Govinda is a mixture of um, vernacular me, me, metr metrical forms and uh, classical metrical forms. So the classical metrical forms, like where Vishve Shama Niranjane Na Janayana Nandam Indivara Sreni Shamala Komala. This is Shardula Vikrivit is a classical Sanskrit meter. But if you take other ones, you know, like Sita Kamala Kucha Mandala He, Dita Kundala He, Kalita Dalita Vanamala Jaya Jaya Deva Hare. This is this is not a this is a, a not a classical Sanskrit meter. This is a, a folk meter. If you look at Hindi meters, if you look at the Hindi meters, what the Hindi songs are in, this is the same kind of meter as the Hindi Hindi meters. You know, they're Moric meters. Anyway, that's, I, I, I won't bother explaining that. It's a bit technical. But <clears throat> but so the Gita Govinda itself is a is not a uh, a classical uh, you know uh, Puranic or scriptural tradition. As we don't get Radha in the scriptural tradition. Anaya radito nunam Bhagavan Harishwara Yano Vihaya this Prita Anayadraha this verse in the Bhagavatam which we take as being an indication of Radha may or may not be an indication of Radha according to the author. Probably yes, I think he's you know he's he's he's, he's pointing towards Radha but Radha's name is not there and Radha's not a, a principal character, you could say. She serves a particular function in that story, an important function, which one day maybe I'll explain. But, they, but, uh, but uh, she's not the Radha of the Gita Govinda. If you look at the Gita Govinda and compare the, uh, compare the Bhagavatam uh, Rasa Lila and you compare the Gita Govinda Rasa Lila, what do you have? Uh, the Gita Govinda Rasa Lila is almost like a, a, a commentary on the Bhagavata Rasa Lila. The Bhagavata Rasa Lila, you have Krishna being Bahubalav, surrounded by, uh, 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 by the hundreds of gopis, uh, dancing with hundreds of gopis, thousands of gopis, millions of gopis, trillions of gopis, unlimited numbers of gopis. He is the supreme male and, every f and all the, the, the jivas are his, are, are his uh, female partners. Uh, everyone is the 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 uh, lover of the supreme. Everyone is the the servant of and mistress of the supreme lover. That's the that's the vision of the Bhagavatam. So the Bhagavatam has Aishwarya as its center. Krishna is in the Bhagavatam. Krishna is 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 Aishwarya Moy because he's Bahubala. He's still the he's still you know Sadhu Maharaj the other day was quite incorrect in pointing out the male. Ego is that of the enjoyer and the purusha. That's why he's called purusha. Hmm? 
So the Parama Purusha, the Parama Purusha is still the supreme enjoyer. But what is our Gaudiya Siddhanta? Krishna Jateka Khela Sarvottama Nara Lila Nara Vaputaha Shuru. His Krishna is the Nara Lila. But this is not Nara Lila. Is this Nara Lila? It's Nara Lila in a teenage boy's fantasy. Hmm? That all the women of the world should throw themselves at my feet. You know, this is a kind of uh, exaggerated uh, ego of an adolescent male. <laughs> so, <coughs> so what happens in Gita Govinda? Exactly the opposite happens. We start in the same place. Vishve Shama Nuranjane Najanayananda Mindivara Sreni Shamala Komalai Rupanayaman Gairanan Gautsavam Swachandam Vraja Sundari Biravita Sarvangam Alingita Shingara Saki Murti Mani Vamadho Mukdo Hari Kirti. So this, this, this Krishna is the, this Shingara uh, Swarup, Shingara Rasa Swarup, that's Krishna, and that's correct. I mean, Gita Govinda, uh, Jayadeva is not writing a philosophical treatise, but he's definitely got a philosophical axe to grind. He's saying something here. When he says that, when he says that Krishna is Sringara Rasa Murtiman, he's pointing the direction that the Raso Vaisaha, that here we have Raso, he, actually the whole of, the whole of uh, Rupa Goswami can be found there. That Sringara Rasa Murtiman. That Krishna is Sringara Rasa Murtiman. That he's the, that he's the, and, and even we just read that in the commentary here. When he says Purusha, he, he was saying Purusha Purushottama. And Purushottama meant what his, was the, his, his Vyakya was that, is, um, that it is uh, Rasika Nayaka Shiromani. Rasika Nayaka Shiromani. That's, that's what Purusha meant. He was saying Purushasya Purushottamasya Rasika Nayaka Shiromani. That was his first definition or first vyakya, or first explanation of, of uh, purusha, the word purusha. So, <clears throat> that's, but that's only the starting point of the, of the, of the uh, Gita Govinda. Because where is the end point of the Gita Govinda? The end point of the Gita Govinda is Swadhina Bhartrika Radha. That Radha Rani. So if he is Krishna, is the Rasika Shiromani. If Krishna is the Rasika Nayaka Churamani. In the, the Rasika Nayaka Churamani, where does he end up? He ends up taking Radharani's dust of the dust of Radharani's feet on his head. And he takes the dust of Radharani's feet on his head, and Radharani says, Kuru Jadunandana Chandana Shishira Tarena Karena Payodhare. So she says, you please decorate my breasts with, uh, with chandan. And she tells him, you, you, you messed up my hair. I want you to fix it. Yeah? My garland, my, everything is a mess, you know, please start tidying up. I like to compare it to a song by a, a, a Canadian jazz singer, Diana Krall. And Diana Krall sings a song called Peel Me a Grape. And I like, I think, that idea of peel me a grape. That's, you know, there's the, the woman, you know, saying to her, her lover, all right then, you know, she's got him. Mm -hmm. She's got him. So she can say to him something, now, I'm ready, you know, peel me a grape, I'm ready to. But that's Rasika Sh Nayaka Shiro Mani. That's Krishna is the Rasika Nayaka Shiro Mani. The, 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 this is a different story. This is something new. And I was explaining that this is a, the, what I was trying to explain before about the, uh, the five verses that Rupa Goswami takes from Gita Govinda. And actually, if you take this, if you follow, the, if you follow what, what Rupa Goswami has extracted from the Gita Govinda and, and, and analyze it, you'll see that actually that his entire philosophy of, of rasa and his entire philosophy of Krishna and Radha is present in, the, in, in those five verses. So... So that's, that's the superstructure, and the substructure is everything else. All the philosophical, when, 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 when Jiva Goswami comes to the end of Krishna Sandarbha, the end of Krishna Sandarbha, he says that the, 
that the Sambandha Tattva, what was the purpose? He first explains that Brahma and, uh, and, and uh, Paramatma and Bhagavan, three different things, or three in one. Hmm? That's our trinity, you could say. But he has the Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavan, he, he explains the difference between these three. And then he explains that Bhagavan, of the forms of Bhagavan, Krishna is this Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. But after he's explained Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, he comes to the conclusion, he says, that the our Sambandha, the conclusion of the Sambandha Tattva, is that Krishna with Radha, that is our, our, our Sambandha Tattva. That we take Krishna, not just, not Krishna alone, but it has to be Krishna, uh, 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 Radha Sangvalita Krishna, that's the, it's Krishna in, in, this, in the company and association of Radha. So, Jiva Goswami faces a, a rather significant task to come to that conclusion, to start with the Bhagavatam, to come to the conclusion that Krishna with Radha, he's got a, he's got a, a, a very difficult task as a, as a, uh, you know, a, an explainer or as a, an exegete, what you say, an exegete or, you know, his exegesis of the Bhagavatam, he's coming to the conclusion that Radha, who's not even mentioned in the Bhagavatam, that she's the, <laughs> that she's the part of it. But that's where he's going. So in the in the in the Rasika Sampradayas of Vrindavan, they say, or they used to say, eh, that we don't need the Bhagavatam. Why waste our time? What do we need to study the Gita for? What do we need to study Vedanta for? Even in the Gaudiya Sampraday, we didn't even bother with Vedanta Sutra for, for uh, until the time of Baladev Vidyabhushan because uh, the Bhagavatam was considered to be the, the natural explanation of the of the of the Vedanta. So even that, even the Vedanta and Shruti, Shrutam, Shruti Mapare, uh, Smriti Me, uh, Apare, uh, Mahabharata Manye, uh, 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 Bhaya Bhita, Bhava Bhita, they say that this verse from the Padyavali. He says that somebody, uh, somebody uh, can, can read the Shruti, someone can read the Smriti, someone else can read Mahabharata, but we don't care. Huh? We don't care because why? Because our Krishna, you know, Aham Nandang Vande Yasyalinde Param Brahma. I worship Nanda Maharaj because Nanda Maharaj's garden, Krishna is Krishna is rolling. We have, this verse was spoken yesterday in that uh, about the Raja Raj. Because Krishna, in the Raja Raj, you know, in in Dwarka and Mathura, Krishna is walking with shoes, but in Vrindavan, Krishna is rolling in the dirt. He's 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 being He's holding on to the tails of the of the calves and being pulled through the mud uh, of the Braja Raj. Hmm? So uh, this is the the Param Brahma Yasyal Aham to Nandang Vande Yasyalinde Param Brahma. The Param Brahma is uh, you know rolling in the dust of Vrindavan. So uh, can anyone compare the dust of Vrindavan to any anything else, any other dust anywhere? Of course, nobody talks about Radharani's dust, which is uh, which was a little bit disappointing yesterday, because we have these all these verses that we're reading now about Radharani's dust. That dust. is more important. <laughs> <laughs> so Radharani is the conclusion. So the person. So what? Did, what did most of the Rasika Sampradayas in Vrindavan? They say just this. This is all we need. If you look at the text, if you look at all the Vanis. Why Krishna is taking dust in Vrindavan? Because this is Radharani. That's right. This is what we're just reading. We just we have just now. We, 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 this is what we're not not talking about today. <laughs> no, we have to talk on that point. <laughs> well, it's just a little bit. But I'm just going to finish because this is. Uh, let me just finish this story. So the whole point is that they say that Radha. And now, if you read it here at the very beginning. Of this commentary by Harila Vyasa, he writes what just yesterday also there was a, a, a someone from Radha Vallabha Sampradaya, and this is what, if they for their Mangalacharan they will always say this verse, which is the first verse of Harila Vyasa's commentary. Radha Iveshtam Sampradaya Ika Karta Acharyo Radha Mantradak Sadgurushcha Mantro Radha Yasya Sarvatmanainam Vande Radha Pada Padma Pradhanam. So this is actually in Bhaktamal also, Navadas uses this expression, Radha Pradhan. So Radha Pradhan. So making Radha the, 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 main, the main thing. 
So here they say that right. So what 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 what, what the tradition in the uh, Radha Vallabhi Sampradaya is that it says that Radharani is our object of worship, Radha Veshtam. Sampradaya, she's the founder of our Sampradaya. She is the Acharya. She is the Mantra Guru. <coughs> she, is the, she is also the Mantra. We, our Mantra, the Mantra in the Sampradaya is Radha. And so, the person who teaches like this, the person who has taught this, is uh, Harivansha, who is Radha Pada Padma Pradhanam. That he's made Radharani the main thing in his life, that the Radharani is the only thing, the, the, that, that is, he's exclusively devoted to Radha and doesn't want to get distracted. So the, the, one of the main things about uh, this, this interpretation of Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi is that always presenting Krishna as subordinate to Radha. Now, even if, even if Radha's bhakti and Radha's prem is glorified, Still, the main thing is that, he, he, in one verse there he says that you have to have your bhava in Krishna and your, and your rasa in Raja. So, there are some slight differences, of course, with, with the way the Gaudiyas are looking at the... At the well, Mahaprabhu is also Radhika, Gauranga. Yeah, he's Radha and Krishna. He's agreeing, everybody's agreeing. Radha Krishna ek atma dui deha dhori, anyonya vilase rasa aswadana kori. This is, no, this is what we're saying. So we have the same idea. We have the Gaudiya Sampradaya is not a different. You can say that Hari Vansha, if he was a Gaudiya, he was saying, look, don't bother me with all this extra stuff. I haven't got time for that. If our business is to do Radha Dasya, if, 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 what we, if, if, our, if our goal is Radha Dasya, then we have to hear and chant and smaran of Radha Dasya. If that's the goal, if we start, if we start getting distracted by Dash avatars and we get, get distracted, even in the even in the in in the, in Gita Govinda, there's Dash Avatar Stotram. You have the Dash Avatar Stotram at the beginning. That's the first song, and then the next song is that uh, 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 is the um, Shrita Kamala. So in in Chaitanya Das's commentary of the of the of the of the first song of the of the Dash Avatar Stotram, there Chaitanya Das says that each one of the avatars is um, is one rasa, is a different rasa. Like Nishinga Dev, you know, for instance, would be, you know, crowed. So Nishinga Dev is showing the rasa of anger. Hmm? So the, the ten avatars are showing different rasas. And then when you come to the Sutta Kamala, then you're getting the Madhura rasa. And then when you get past that, then you come to the Rasa Lila and you see the manifestation of, the, of, of Krishna in Madhura rasa. Shingara Murti Mandir. So, Hari Vansha was saying, this is the end, we don't want to bother with the rest. But in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, the, 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 in Gaudiya Sampradaya, the range was larger. Just like in the Vallabha Sampradaya. The Vallabha Sampradaya also, uh, they became worshippers of Radha also. In the Vallabha Sampradaya, they're also worshipping Radha, Vittalnath and followers, they worship Radha in Surdas and so on, but in, in the Vallava Sampradaya you have more variety and more range. And so Gaudiya Sampradaya also like that, the range is a little bit greater and some of the vision is different. But still, if you're really going to do Raganuga Bhajan, if you're going to come to the, if you're going to come to the Vrindavan Bhav, if you're going to actually understand uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's avadan, if you're going to come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift, you have to come to Radha, you have to come to Vrindavan, you have to come to exclusive devotion and Radha Dasya. This is where Raghunath Das is, this is where Rupa Goswami is, this is where, the, this is where our six Goswamis uh, are st st situated. So we don't want to, so in actual fact, the agreement is there. But the disagreement comes uh, when uh, uh, the, <coughs> let's say the disagreement comes from the uh, impoliteness, or that the, that there was some that there was some break in maryada, that there was not proper maryada given, that somehow or another that uh, Hari Bhaksh did not give Gopal Bhatta Goswami the proper respect, and so therefore he was e excluded, and that's why. So they so when that happened, what happens then? What does someone do? Let's say look at Kripala. I wanted to talk about Kripala today also because of his, you know, the... He is the, one of the best close devotee of Kripala. Acha. So, uh, but, but we have uh, several examples, but, uh, well, 
I'll be careful then to not to say anything that will be harmful or hurtful. But uh, you know, when the, the the fact is that you know the parampara sampradaya. This is one of the s important things in Hinduism in general. You know, offering respect to the source of your of your of your information and so on. So what happens when, for instance, in Hithari Vansha, the hagiographies, the stories about his life, are all very um, uh, imaginative, let's put it. They say that he wrote Radha Rasa when he was six months baby. He couldn't, even, he couldn't even speak, and he was lying in the cradle, and uh, the, the, the verses of the, of the Radha Rasa came out of his mouth uh, just like that. So now, if you're a very, very sincere disciple of Hithari Vamsha, you accept that on faith and you're going to accept that. But I mean, I will not accept that. And probably anybody else who is saying will say, probably not. Yeah? And they say that all kinds of things happened when he was... So they tried to present and that Radharani came to him and gave him the mantra in a, in a dream and, and, and so on and so forth. So they, 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 this idea that Radha, this exclusivity to Radha, they give it to him as, a, as his own, uh, as his own uh, that's his story. They want to make it that he's exclusively Radha and that he didn't get anything from anybody else. He didn't get anything from anybody else. Well, this is, a, you know, I mean, I respect all the Sampradayas. And I respect the, the, this, this contribution of the commentary here. This commentary, Harilal Vyasa has made a very nice commentary on, on, on Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, and he's done it in full faith that it's Hitari Vanksha's book. So people who do things out of faith, you know, they can still produce, uh, 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 you know, excellent material. It's a, it's a bit of a conflict. In actual fact, in this world, there is no flame that has no smoke. In the Gita, Krishna says, He says that, you know, that, that, that every effort in this world is covered by some kind of smoke. Now you have to know how to, take the, how to extract the fire from a, fire and, a mixture of fire and smoke. But if there's fire, if there's smoke, then there's, there's fire also. Hmm? But in the fact is, the fact is that, so that, uh, so what is it? It's that Hari Lal, uh, that Hithari Vangsha promoted the idea that we want, even though it, it's obviously false, obviously a, a, a story that he's telling to his disciples or that his disciples are telling about him, that this is what happened. That he got Krishna, that he wrote the, Hari, the Radha Rasa Sudhaniti when he was just a baby in the, in the cradle, that he got initiated by Radha when he was five or six years old, he fell into a, he fell into a well, and, uh, and uh, when he fell into the well, he, uh, he found the deities there, and came out, and he's, you know, all these different uh, kinds of magical stories about his life that, that uh, are all, all only meant to show that, that he is purely devoted to Radha and nothing else. So Hitari Vangsh, I mean, in, in Hitari Vangsh's Hindi songs, I, I studied this. I, you know, he's written Chaurasi Pada and he's written Sutavani, and uh, then there's another, one other thing that he wrote, which is a, a, a letters that he wrote, so a few letters in Rajbasha that he wrote, four letters, I think. So those, those are the, that's the only writing that we have. And an analysis of that writing, you know, shows that it most probably compared to, it does he didn't write the Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. If, if we look at the language and so on, the kind of language that's there, it's not exactly the same. And also the mood is very different. Actually, the mood of Chaurasi Pada is more Krishna-oriented. Radha-oriented is not so... I mean, the interpretations are there, but the, really it's, it's, it's a, a more Krishna-oriented than Radha-oriented. Sutavani also. Anyway, that's, that's debatable, but, I'm, but, I, but, uh, but not like this. It's not like this. It's not like Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. And, excuse me, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, isn't it written in Sanskrit originally? Yes, exactly. And Hitari, she wasn't able to speak Sanskrit somewhere. Well, that we don't know. But I mean, I, you know, the, you, you can't say that, because Hitari Vangsha's father was... Um, Hitari Vangsha's father and grandfather were famous um, astrologers. And they were actually... Hitari Vangsha's father was an astrologer for the court. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's why they were they were very wealthy. And obviously, if they were if he was an astrologer, that means he must have known Sanskrit and known, known you know to read the the Jyotish scriptures. So I'm sure that Hitari Moksha was new Sanskrit. But but uh, and his language, his 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 Brajabhasha is is marjita. It's a it's not a it's not a, like you can see the different kinds of. A Brajabhasha, just like Hindi, you can have Hindi people who are speaking a Sanskritized Hindi and people who speak a more, uh, more Persianized Hindi, Hindi, let's say, and so on. The different different kinds of uh, Hindi and different kinds of Brajabhasha. So the, there's a pure, a, a very elevated Brajabhasha that's very Sanskritized and so on. So let's say Hari Vansha fits somewhere in the middle. But like I mean, take for instance Swami Haridas. Swami Haridas is you know it, it, it's almost pure Brajabhasha. He doesn't. He doesn't use tatsama forms. He doesn't use actual s Sanskrit forms. He's using all, you know, like instead of saying Chandra, for instance, he would say Chand, that kind of thing. So using the, this is a, the, anything. Oh, that's about the language. It's a different. It's a. It's a, These are things that you know. You can. I can say that. You know, you'd have to have the to understand that. So where am I? So. Prabodhananda Saraswati is supporting Hari Vamsha. Prabodhananda Saraswati is saying, yes, you're right. Once you've gotten, when Prabodhananda Saraswati says, when you get to Radha, then stay with Radha. Uh, don't get distracted by the other stuff. Hmm? He's saying that, he's saying, in all his works, Prabodhananda Saraswati, in every one of his works, there's not the, the only one, you know, even even uh, the even his commentary on the uh, on the 87th chapter of the Bhagavatam, 10th canto, the Shruti Stuti Vyakya, the Shruti Stuti Vyakya of Prabodhananda Saraswati is extremely interesting. He takes he, the, you know, the 87th chapter of the of the 10th canto. The, the, the theme there is that when uh, Vishnu is lying after the creation and the, uh, he's lying in the ocean, in the, in, the, in, the, in the causal ocean or in whatever ocean he's lying in there, whichever Vishnu it is, I forget. And then, uh, then he has to wake up to do the creation. So who comes and wakes him up? The Shrutis come and wake him up. But there's one verse in the, in the Shruti Stuti where, uh, you know, uh, Nibrita Marun Manoksha, which is quoted several times, where, the, where it says that the Shrutis follow in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan. So what Prabodhananda has done, he said that, okay, w the, the, these are not, this is not Krishna or not Vishnu in the ocean of milk, but this is uh, Krishna in the kunj. And the gopis are coming to wake Krishna up in the kunj. And he reinterprets all these very, very difficult verses. I mean, really difficult verses. They're strictly, I mean, the, in the Bhagavatam you have many difficult verses, but these are verses are really the champion difficult verses of the Bhagavatam. And, and, the, and uh, the, the, they are based on, on Shruti. They are based entirely on the Upanishads. Every verse of the, of the Shruti Stuti Vyakya is referenced, you know, and if you read Sridhar's commentary, you'll see all the references to the, to the, to the different texts and verses, there are little, little bits of quotation, little bits of reference and that, and uh, you get the, all the shrutis in there. But he's taken these verses and he's turned them into descriptions of Radha and Krishna Lila. It's a tour de force, really. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, and then he has Ascharya Rasa Prabandha. So in Ascharya Rasa Prabandha, he re-describes the Rasa Lila, but puts Radharani in the center and explains everything about the, 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 the Rasa Lila as, with, with, you know, in terms of Radha. You know, how does Radha go when the flute is played? Yeah. What happens when Radharani left the, the, the scene of the Rasa dance? All these things he's going into, this is, this is what he's interested in. He's interested in reinterpreting the Rasa Lila according to uh, this uh, Radha Pradhanya. And Sangeet Madhava of Prabodhananda Saraswati and Sangeet Madhava, he's describing from a point of view of a manjari who is desiring to get, have a service to Radha. And so the, she, the whole, the whole, uh, Asya, uh, the whole Sangeet Madhava is described from that point of view. Radha Pradha. Pradha. Vida, Vrindavan Mahimamrita, glorification of Vrindavan Dham, but a glorification of Vrindavan Dham which puts Radharani and Krishna's Leela at the center.
of Vrindavan time. So this is the this is Prabodhananda Saraswati's mood. So Prabodhananda Saraswati's mood is it, it, present in Radha Rasa Sudhani. It's almost impossible to say that, that Prabodhananda did not write Radha Rasa Sudhani. If we look at the language, like I, I, when I wrote my article about this, thing, I pulled out, you know, I went through all these books and I took out all the verses that were similar. That sometimes you find exact same verses, Sangeet Madhava, exact same verse in Sangeet Madhava as is in Radha Rasa Sudhani. You find whole phrases, words re repeated in one and repeated in the other. Even a verse from the Chaitanya Chandramata, verses from Chaitanya Chandramata, Yata Yata Gaura Padara Vindeva Vindeta Bhaktin Krita Punya Rashim Tata Tata Sarpati Hridya Kasmat Si Radha Padam Bhuja Sokya Rashmi Sokya Rashi. So the, 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 these kinds of verses, almost the same kind of language that is found in the, in the Radha Rasa Sudhani. So, what does it mean? It means that Prabodhananda Saraswati, it, I say, Prabodhananda Saraswati gave the book to Hari Bhansha. He said, I support you. Here. So now when he did that, what happened when Prabodhananda Saraswati uh, supports Hita Hari Bhansha? There's already some bad feeling there. Gopal Bhatta is already, you know, Gopal Bhatta is, is uh, uh, you know, angry with or displeased. And most of the other Vaishnavas are also, you know, not feeling very comfortable with Hita Hari Bhansha because of the way he's rejected Mahaprabhu really he's rejected Mahaprabhu he's no there's no you know he doesn't he doesn't uh, he doesn't glorify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so for the Gauriyas this is uh, you know Gopal Bhatta in the Radharaman family they still glorify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu they won't say they, they, will, they will still uh, sometimes less sometimes more but but uh, they, they will they, they they still you know like for instance, uh, Sri Bhatti Goswami, he's calling his place the Chaitanya Prema Sangstan. So he's, you know, committed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, still following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Many of the Gauriyas who live in Vrindavan for many generations, they kind of lose their, their Mahaprabhu mood. Today, by the way, Kartik Purnima, it's getting late, but right now, the Kirtan is starting at Amyanimai Temple. Mahaprabhu's uh, visit to to Vrindavan. As a matter of fact, is is it 500? I don't know. It's, I think last year they, they celebrated the 500th anniversary. Not this year. I, you know, this last year, I think, the 500th anniversary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's visit to Vrindavan. Maybe it's this year. I forget. I have to ask. But the Nitai Radhisham people coming to I mean, why they do kirtan of Mahaprabhu's visit to Vrindavan? I think I'm, after here I'm going to go. Me too. Uh -huh. We'll see. I mean, maybe we'll catch it, but maybe we'll not. I don't know. I, I, I don't know the times. Anyway, we should go home. We'll pay business this time. You might. So, just to conclude. So, the, 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 so if, if Prabodhananda supported Hithari Vangsha, now just imagine, the guy who wrote Chaitanya Chandramrita, Prakashananda, if he's Prakashananda Saraswati, which I'm going to say yes, he was Prakashananda Saraswati. If Prakashananda Saraswati converted, you know, was converted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wrote the Chaitanya Chandramrita, spent time in Puri, spent time in Navadvip, traveled, then finally he came back to Vrindavan. When he came back to Vrindavan, he met Hithari Bhangsha and he said, yes, this is what we're supposed to be doing, Radha Bhav. And he started to write inspired work after inspired work glorifying Radha. And then this happened between him and, and uh, uh, then uh, the, this incident took place and, and the, there was a break in the Sampradaya. And, and Prabodhananda Saraswati, well, I'm taking Hari Vangsha's side. Hari Vangsha is right. Hari Vangsha is right that, that, that uh, following Ekadasi, following the Vidhi, is not part of uh, Raganuga Bhakti. That Radha Dasya is the, is the primary thing. And then everything else, and there's the verse that, that in the chat, I, I read the verse here, it's, it's a verse, here, there's one verse in here, one verse in this book that doesn't mention Radha. Huh? And in that verse he says that, he says that people who uh, don't put on Tapta Mudra, who don't wear Tilak, who don't put Golam, uh, you know, Kantimala. Huh? He says there, and the word, the significant word in the verse is Mahabuddhaya. So Mahabuddhaya has the interesting possibility of being interpreted as maha buddhaya or maha abuddhaya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh? Mm -hmm. You can either say it means very intelligent or very stupid. So the Gaudiyas, they say very stupid. 
And the Bhari Bhangshi say very intelligent. And so very intelligent means that they're very intelligent if they don't. And of course, how can the Gaudiyas say that it's very stupid? Because we don't do Tapta Mudra. We have our own tradition about Tapta Mudra that uh, Ranbari Krishnadas, Ranabari Krishnadas went to Dwarka and got the Tapta Mudra. When he came back to Vrindavan, then Radharani came to him in a dream and said, Sorry, buddy, you're, you're no longer in my group, you're in, Ra you're in Rukmini's group now. So you're now Rukmini's devotee. So uh, we don't, uh, you know, and then Ranabari Krishnadas went into Viraha and ended up burning himself in like uh, like sati. Separation. Yeah. Separation. Yes, because Radharani refused. He said Radharani. The story is that Radharani came to him in a dream before he he wanted he he'd been from a very young age. He came from Bengal when he was still a child. He came to Vrindavan and was became a Babaji at an early age and was doing bhajan in Vrindavan. And then one day he said, I haven't seen anything, I haven't, I haven't done pilgrimage, so let me do pilgrimage around yeah. India. I want to visit the Char Dham, I want to, visit, you know, want, want to go to South India and see the temples and everything like that. Then Radharani appeared to him in a dream and said, don't go. He says, you stay here, you're my, you're, you're my Dasi, you stay here in Vrindavan. But he didn't pay attention. So he didn't pay attention and went on the pilgrimage and he went around India for several years and traveled around. And when he came to Dwarka, you know, then when he came to Dwarka, they, 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 he, he had the Tapta Mudra placed on his arms, you know, the four signs of Vishnu. So then when he came back to Vrindavan, then he, had a, then he, he was here and he was trying to do bhajan. He wasn't getting any spurti, he wasn't getting any inspiration. And finally, he you know he started to he started to pray, and Radharani appeared to him in a dream and said, "Sorry, you 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 blown it. You went. I told you not to go. You went, and then you came. We went to Dwarka, and you took this. And now you're part of Rukmini's group. I can't take you back. You're, you you know you. So, so the our tradition doesn't have that Tapta Mudra. So now, how can we say that that Tapta Mudra is the is a part of our sampradaya? So it's kind of an interesting verse from that point of view. But the point really is, that if you look, there's further evidence. Because in, in, in from Vrindavan Mahimamrita, and uh, there's a book called Prema Pattanam. A book called, it's a little known book in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, Prema Pattanam. But it's, uh, it's from, from the Gadadhar Bhakta tradition. So the interesting is that Gadadhar Bhakta tradition is right next door to Radha Balava Temple. Gadadhar Bhatta deities is also Mother Mohan. Jai Sri Radhe, Maaf ki jiv, Aap Mahatra, Yeh sab aitihasik baat kehne lagye wanta, Maaf ki jiv, Aap Mahatra, Such a thing, such a thing. I was quite interested to hear it also. Well, we're almost finished anyway, so there's no... Jai Sri Radhe. It was a historical talk. Now, just let me finish this, because this is a Prem Pattanam there, it also says, it says that, uh, you know, the Prem Pattanam, the, the point of this book is that everything in Vrindavan Leela is upside down. And I, 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 on my blog I, I have a, an article about Prem Pattanam, and I list all the different, uh, the, all the different uh, things that he says are upside down in, in, in the world. In the world of love, everything is upside down. And one of the, the very first thing that he mentions is that Dharma is Adharma and Adharma is Dharma. And so, in, to, to support that, he quotes one verse from Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and one verse from Vrindavan and Mahimamrita. So that that principle that, that, uh, that in, in Raganuga Bhakti, that the Dharma is not the same as the Vaidhi Bhakti Dharma of following the rules and regulations. The, the only Dharma is Prema Dharma, that you follow your heart into, into serving uh, uh, Radharani's lotus feet. So, so that, you know, that there, in that Prem Pattanam, he, he brings Prabodhananda and, and, uh, and uh, Hari Vangsha and shows how they are together, what, where, where the togetherness comes. So, <clears throat> and that was an influential thing because in the Gopal Gadadhar Bhatta family also, they preserved that tradition, they accepted that tradition. So it seems, one, more evidence that there were people in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, like uh, Bhagwan Rasik. So Rasik, uh, uh, he wrote Rasik Ananyamal, 
he wrote a book that was about glorifying Harivansha and Harivansha's disciples. This is where we get the information about Prabhupada Saraswati. It's from a book called Ananya Rasikama. So it's another one of these Rasikama, Bhaktamal type books which glorifies the devotees. And in there he tells the story of Prabodhananda Saraswati. But he's a Gaudiya. He also translated one of the, he, he's, he's initiated in the uh, Radha Govinda temple uh, line. He's a, the, he was a disciple of, of Haridas Pujari. Harida, the same Haridas Pujari who is uh, mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita as blessing Chaitanya, uh, blessing uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj when he wrote the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, his, so one of the disciples of, of that Hari Das Pujari wrote, was still you know, associating with the Hari Vamsi Sampradaya and was, and was actually glorifying and promoting them and, and, uh, and uh, participating with them. And other people, there's other people also who are, who are like that. Even uh, from, from Hari Ram Vyas, Hari Ram Vyas, who is the uh, Kishorban, which Kishorban is right next to Seva Kunj, in Kishorban. So he was a friend of Hari Vansha also. He wrote many poems. He's very famous, uh, not so much in Gaudiya's, but we don't, we don't uh, know about him so much. The Gaudiya's are pretty anchored in Bengali culture, so they don't, uh, the, the, the Vrindavan culture, most, most Gaudiya's don't know much about it. But Hari Ram Vyas was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And he was the best friend of, of, uh, of uh, so my feeling, you know, Ram Dasji, is that when, when during the period, let's say from the, in the period from the time that the, the, that, the, that the Goswamis came, or let's say first half of the 16th century, there were not many people here in Vrindavan who were doing Rasik Bhajan. But you started to have, you have a few, like uh, the, the Adi, you know, the Nimbarka Sampradaya, you have uh, Sri Bhakta, and you have you know, Swami Haridas, and you have Vallabhacharya's disciples, and so on. And they're all assembling here in Vrindavan. And when they come here, it's natural that they're going to hang out with each other because they don't have their own institutions. They don't have their own disciples yet. They're just coming and they're, and they're really, it's a kind of an axial age type of thing. That uh, the, the, there's some you know, mechanism, there's some magic in the air and some magic in the dust of Vrindavan, there's some magic in the Jamuna water, and these people came together and they started to do, to discuss Radharani and, and, to, and to write songs. They were all creative individuals, you know, they were writing uh, tomes of work on, on, on Radharani, they were discussing, they were talking, they were, you know, it was a, 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 a febrile and creative atmosphere. So eventually, I mean, these are all, all uh, brilliant individuals, who are all inspired, but naturally when you have individual, inspired individuals, they don't all agree with one another. So eventually they, you know, kind of split off into their own uh, particular, and created their own particular uh, sampradaya. But in the, in the root, in the beginning, there was a, a closeness there. And still you can find that closeness. You can still find that closeness in, when it comes to pure Radha Bhav, pure <coughs> Radha Dasya. Then we're all agreed. We're all agreed, whether you're a Radha Balavi, whether you're a Gaudiya, whether you're a, a, a Haridasi, or even, you know, a, a Vallava Sampradaya, you know, the idea that we're Dasi of Radharani, this idea is common. There may be some differences in taste and some differences in mood. But that's the ultimate, you know, how far is it from Raghunath Das Goswami to Prabodhana the Saraswati? It's not that big of a leap. You know, how far is it from, from Swami Haridas? Uh, to uh, Sri Bhatta, to uh, 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 Hari Vyas, to, 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 to Raghunath Das Goswami. It's the same Radha Bhav. So this is our Bhav, this is Radha Bhav, this is what we want. So we don't have, we, you know... So, what to do? Are we going to be Sampradayaka? Are we, uh, is that the thing? Is that, is that what happens? Is that we have to, we have to uh, give our importance to the, our sectarian uh, affiliation and that our sectarian affiliation should take precedence over our uh, cultivation of Radha Bhav? This is the this is a question that keeps coming that, that we're faced with continuously. Even I was going to say that Kripalu just so Kripalu is a very controversial figure. Kripalu is a very controversial figure. And, you know, you know Nikasavet before yesterday? Yeah. 